All right. Ask the podcast coach for August 26, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it is Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I am Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. And on today's show, we're going to answer questions like feed drop or host endorsement. That's coming up in just a second. And here to help me answer that question from TheAverageGuy.tv is the one and only Jim Collison. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. Happy National Dog Day. Did you know that was a thing? I did I wonder, not know I that. I wonder how many podcasters, I wonder how many dog podcasts there are. I mean, it's it's in, in the United States, having a dog super popular, I am sure. If you're in chat and you've got a dog, drop it. If you're on YouTube and you've got a dog podcast, drop that down in the in the uh, the comments below. And I remember I interviewed a guy who does, because it was like one of those, like this, such a niche show, and he did a show for professional dog walkers. Oh. And he had a whole thing and software and all sorts of stuff. But it was like, yep, that's a niche. And, well, it'd be uh, great to podcast to those folks. Like, is there walking all these dogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Have a podcast for them. There you go. And stories of being bit and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that just the cleanup would be the. Yeah. Well, right? I, I just got back from podcast movement and yeah. there were puppies, which means there was poop and um really they had puppies again after, yeah oh boy yeah and mm. they were they were cute and lovely and um oh, you know it was boy. a so but same, uh, you know same people brought them i think so something okay. something puppy society whatever oh, but yeah. the same company same company who i, who I believe them. so yeah okay. and and the whole thing was to get them adopted or something like yeah. that but they yeah. were they were very very tiny very cute yeah yeah and very cute so but uh you know what goes good with puppies coffee a little bit of coffee. Huh? Yeah, that's it, man. So, uh, of course, that coffee pour. I just realized I have none of my slides ready. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you really uh, don't. I really don't. I'm like so not prepared. Uh, but uh, it's the podcast movement hangover. It is but... the podcast movement hangover. That did you, uh, did you see Mark at the at podcast? I did not. Oh, okay. He did not go. But uh, that is brought to you by podcastbranding.co. It is Mark, the fabulous Mark. He is a graphic designer and a podcaster and the king of making sure you are happy with the way things look on your website on your artwork on your lead magnet he is a master of this i've used him three times for the school of podcasting for ask the podcast coach and the podcast rodeo show and i'm ecstatic with all of those because you might be able to find somebody cheaper on fiverr but they're not going to sit down with you and listen to your show and see what your goals are and the vibe of your show and that's exactly what Mark does. He's amazing at it. And you should check him out because you got to remember, they're going to see you before they hear you. So check him out. Podcastbranding.co. Tell him Dave and Jim sent you. Cappuccino on the phone. Take me home. Oh, nice recovery on that. Big thanks to our friend Dan Lefebvre I'm over trying. there at Based on a True Story. It's, it's fine. Take your time. Based on a True Story podcast at Based on a True Story podcast.com. Right now, he's looking at, uh, if, you, if you head out there, this week, uh, Sweet Dreams, Pompeii, and Saving Mr. Banks. So if you want to know how, how much was that really based on a true story, you can check it out, Based on a True Story podcast.com. And of course, Dan is a fabulous podcaster as well. Uh, Dan, appreciate your sponsorship. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we have royalty in the uh, in the chat room today. None other than Glenn Hebert. Oh, hey, Glenn. From the Horse Radio Network. Yeah, podcast movement was A, busy. I don't know how many people were there, but there was one thing that I noticed and I was like, huh. So you have this, you know, big hallway that, I mean, it was huge. It's at the Gaylord. So it's a whole other city. And you kind of walk down this big hallway past the big rooms and the blah, 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 and the registration booth. And you turn left and you head towards the lobby because that's where this little snack thing is, right? But it's a long hallway. And I look up and I'm like, oh, look, it's, this is cool. There's a bunch of, I don't know, 25 to 28 year old females. And there's, there's another table of females and, and more females. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, 
are there any dudes here? Like, hold like, because I remember the days when that's all you saw. And literally the whole hallway was table after table of younger, right? I'm going to, I don't, if I say young, that sounds creepy. So younger females. And finally at the very end, there were two tables, maybe four guys. And I was like, that's, that's different. So I love the fact that we've been saying for years, ladies, you need to hop in. And apparently they, they did. So it was, it was cool. The, um, the great thing was the, the hall for all the vendors. It was, I'm not making this up. It was the size of a football field, maybe bigger. It was ginormous. Crazy. And it doubled as a meat locker. So if you wanted <laughs> to keep your meat cold, uh, you could do that. And what was interesting, a little, little chilly is what you're saying. Uh, it was, and we were at like the Southern end, which I think had its own atmosphere. Cause it was so big <laughs> that when you walked towards, they had puppies again. And, and when you got towards that side, it really was like a poor Todd and, and Mike Dell were like, they should have brought parkas. Um, and I get it. I'm not blaming podcast movement. I mean, when you have an oh, right. establishment, that's big. Um, yeah. Is uh, DR says, is it as huge? They did not have a boat ride. In this, in fact, the the main hall was under reconstruction, and I, I think they had a water park thing there too. Um, so, but uh, it was uh, interesting. And what did you speak on? You spoke on something, right? I spoke on the five questions every podcaster must ask, and of course, in true Dave Jackson fashion, I gave you two bonus things. I talked nice. about how because the one thing I see people do is they go, "I'm going to do a weekly podcast." And you're like, "Okay." And then they go to do it and they're like, wow, that took 12 hours. And they don't ask themselves, do I have 12 hours a week right. to do a podcast? Because if you do and you go, yeah, I don't have 12 hours a week, you're either outsourcing this or you then try to cram a weekly podcast into a life that will not support a weekly podcast. And that's when you get into the whole, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Uh, and that's always an option. You know, but uh, I said it's better to record a couple because number one, uh, as Jim always says, re uh, you can delete those, the first couple of ones. And you should, you yeah. should delete them. Uh, record those, but get get a stopwatch. There's a, a website I use all the time. I think it's T O G G L toggle. It's like a, something you can use to track time. And what you don't realize is, especially with interviews, there's the time to you know even just scheduling the interview, finding yeah. somebody that would you think okay, here's my scheduling link. And then the actual, I don't know about you, when I do an interview, it's always an hour, at least. Like the interview is 20 minutes, for sure. but there's like the 10 minute, what do you have for breakfast talk? And then 10 minutes at the end, I'll be sure to let you know when this goes live and who do we talk to? So it's an hour. And then you take that, that hour long tape, tape, how old am I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it a track or is yeah. that, what are we talking about, Dave? <laughs> and, uh, and then you take, by the time you edit it down, it's like interviews are, they're mm -hmm. time consuming. So that's where I'm like, you might want to record a couple, go, wow, that took 15 hours for one episode. Do I have 15 hours a week? No, but I do have 15 hours a month for maybe two of those. Okay. Well, you're doing a biweekly show or you're going to make your interviews much shorter and, you know, just keep your eye on the clock a bit. So yeah, you got to, uh, you got to figure out that way to get the payoff the the incentives right for yourself if you're going to do that right there's got to be a payoff for you otherwise you'll you'll do it for a month or two and then in, in even with the best intentions you think oh yeah no no, no i'm never going to get this way <laughs> you do after about a month or two you're like what's in this for me like wh yeah. why, why am i doing this again and then you know um you know so you you've just got to you you just got to kind of figure out Hey, I got to get the motivations right for me. Yeah. And, and Glenn is asking, was it a mix of corporates and independents? Yeah, definitely more independents. If uh, I, the best, um, the best description somebody said once of what's the difference between podcast movement and podcast movement evolutions. Uh, the answer is podcast movement evolutions, more suits. So you definitely have more wonderies and all the big networks are there. Um, and so, uh, the in general, I just saw a lot of indies. Um, the um, yeah, I just didn't see a lot of suits, but I know they were there because the advertised cast team, which is owned by Libsyn, those guys were they showed we had 32 people in our booth, like we brought basically the whole advertised cast team, and those guys were in meetings nonstop. So, the I know it's great for Libsyn, we had a lot of really great leads and things like that. 
Um, but it, the the advertised cast team is just they show up and it's yeah. just you know, um, it, it was uh, it was fun. That was the other yeah. fun thing. So and the parties were good. Um, I got uh, Libsyn had their own party. They uh, and here's again the the fun part of being a podcaster. And Glenn knows this. He talks about it all the time. You learn to improv. And so I thought they were kidding a couple of weeks ago. They said, we're going to rent a guitar and John's going to sing at, at our Libsyn party. And I was like, yeah, we, we can't do that. Two weeks, that's not going to happen. And uh, yeah, it did. They're like, yeah, we rented you a guitar. And so that was uh, was fun. We played a lot of three chord masterpieces. And uh, <laughs> isn't was, aren't all pop songs just three chords? It's most of them. Yeah. GC, GC and yeah d d d d yeah it's yeah. better known as a one four five which <laughs> is the entire career of uh chuck berry all of his songs are one four five g c d or in his case a d e well they sound good together apparently that's yeah. it and so. uh chris stone from uh, cast ahead says uh, i missed the talk from the olive garden waiter yeah i had a, a libson's all in black now we have black and then we have our logo and i wore a libson shirt that had a collar and just the little lips and logo, which you don't see when you're, you know, 10 rows back. And so I just looked like an Olive Garden waiter uh, so <laughs> for, your, for your session. Walk over. Would you like more breadsticks, please? <laughs> um, so that was fun. And uh, yes, bad to the bone. Uh, Chris Stone is um, batting down. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's another, I, I believe, one, four five. So uh, well, there's there's some there's some uh, wisdom in that from a podcasting standpoint, too, like. There are certain easy things that sound good oh. in podcasting, right, to do. And I think, you know, you know the deal as a musician, and I was too for about 15 years. And you 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 practice and you play, and you get so sick of doing the basics, of oh. doing the, the things that you need to do. You get so right. sick of it. But your audience, for some of them, it's the first time they've heard that, or they they really like that part about you. And, the, the, you know, play. The, I am sure. Listen, I am sure when Motley Crue is playing <laughs> now and they get done and the crowd is shouting, play, whatever, right. whatever the, the the most famous Motley Crue. Yeah. Song, if they haven't played it already. But you know what I mean? They're like, oh, my God, if I have to play that yeah. one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, it's different for the audience. And I think we have to remember that, that our audience doesn't they don't get sick of it. Well, that was that was it. It was funny because we're sitting there and there's nothing like pressure when you have, you know, 30 people like play another song. And we're like, what what, do you know this one? Do you? So I said, wait a minute. This is a sing along crowd. So we instantly popped up Mustang Sally and uh, Brown Eyed Girl, which is a song that if I never have to play again, I will be extremely happy. But the coolest thing about um, that song is it's again, G, C and D. And all of a sudden my brain goes, hey, that whole right before the chorus there's a little switch around there and my fingers are going all right uh brain if you could unearth dust off what are the chords for the pre-chorus and i'm like brain's going i got nothing and i'm like (laughs) fingers are like no seriously we got like eight bars to figure out what we're going to play next and it was the coolest thing ever i swear it was like somebody grabbed my hand and went it's here it was total muscle memory oh wow and when oh, it did it, I was God. like, hey, that's yeah. right. I'm like, oh, and now I now I remember it goes to the thing and the the thing and then the minor and then the G. And it was so I was just like, wow, that was that was worth the whole evening. Because literally <laughs> it was like somebody just grabbed my hand and just went and I was, oh, that that is the chord. So that was fun. But what was fun, and uh, to bring this back to podcasting, and you made yeah. a great point. Yeah. When you're good at something, it makes it look easy. So yeah. the marketing department had never seen me play. And and my boss in the marketing area goes, Later, he goes, how did you, like, what did you do to be able to do that? And I said, from sixth grade to most of high school, I would come home, do my homework, do my paper route, eat dinner. And once dinner was done, Dave was in the basement playing till 11 o'clock. So like five hours a day, I played the guitar nonstop, played with the radio, played with whatever records. I'm learning Linda Ronstadt and Jimi Hendrix and Fleetwood Mac and whatever else was my brother albums had. And I go, and then I, that then leads to you getting in a band. So you, you just, your experience builds on other things. And I remember the, one of the last bands I was in, I played, I was a, the hired guitar player. It wasn't really a band. It was the hired guitar player to play in a band that played on an Island in Lake Erie. And that guy was famous. Like I learned 40 songs. I think I played 10 of them. And he look at me and go, 
oh, we're going to do this song. I'm like, I've never heard of that. He's like, that's oh, it's okay. It's a, it's a one, four, five in a sharp. Go with and, me. <laughs> and then he'd go watch me and then turn his back to me. So I'm playing songs I've never heard in front of people. Um, now the beautiful thing is uh, put in Bay is the name of the Island. They have t-shirts that say we're a drinking Island with a fishing problem. And, <laughs> and those people were not tipsy. They were wasted. So you could have played oh. anything in front of these people. And, uh, it was, uh, great fun so cast ahead makes an interesting point in chat he says uh, music is powerful playing it teaches so many things that aren't actually music you know we we think i mean yeah music you think about the lyrics and you know those lyrics come back the chords you played they come back but don't underestimate the power of the spoken word like we went a couple years ago that's a while ago six years ago or so brian regan was in town you know he's a comic and oh, yeah. super funny love brian regan and at the end of his show, people just shout things for him to say. Like, yeah. you know, he's got these, these, right. you know, cup of dirt, you know, kind of right. th those kinds of things. And, and those are routines he's done that people love. And that's all spoken word stuff. And my kids, listen, we quote, we quote here at the Collison House, more Brian Regan than anybody. Every situation <laughs> has a Brian Regan quote associated with it here, right? So don't underestimate that in your podcast, that the, the these little verbal things that you do, if you sense your audience starts picking up on them, use them to your advantage. Play yeah. to them. Mention Again, goes back to the musical thing. You're sick of it. You're like, ah, I don't want to say this again. You know, I've, I've, listen, I've done 580 some episodes of Home Gadget Geeks. The opener is the same every week, but it's that trigger, right? It's that thing we say to them. So Make sure you're, I think, make sure you're being consistent in some of those things that is, is um, um, sitting well with the audience. Well, it's weird because it's, it's just something I started doing. It's, but uh, because I've been doing this a while, the phrase back in the day comes up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was talking to somebody yeah. and I was like, yeah. you know, back in the day. And they kind of looked at me like, hey, that's not how you, you say that. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> back in the day, you know, and they just smiled. And I was exactly. like, yeah, exactly. so it's like, come on, play the hits, Dave. I was like, all right, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Glenn says, uh, li listeners would hate us if we didn't. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. so I'm sorry, Ted. You got to play Cat Scratch Fever again, you know, for the eight million time. So, um, can we take a tangent for ten seconds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Danny Gables in the house. Danny, you missed a great reunion. You should have gone to the Ellet High School forty year reunion. Oh. So, um. And my talk went okay, but I, I did find out if, you, if, if anything ever does not work, let me, let me hit the thing. So here's the thing. I had to talk at my 40th reunion. Yeah. I ran that thing from the minute we got off yesterday to the minute I did it. I was so nervous and I decided because I'm Dave and I want to be on the edge and I want to push the envelope because that's what I like to do. Um, I decided to throw in a masturbation joke and it's not mm. even my joke. I mm. stole it. I stole mm. the joke directly from Dennis Miller and I always thought it was hilarious but it's talking about things that we had lived through. You yeah. know, we, we survived teeter totters and merry go rounds and hot metal slides that would remove layers of skin at a time, you know? And I go, um, <laughs> and so I said, Hey, we used to go into the local quickie mart here was called Lawson's. And I go, we used to go into Lawson's to get chip dip and there'd be a playboy magazine behind the counter in a Brown wrapper even. And I said, and if you wanted it, you had to ask for it. And I said, fast forward to today holy cow look where we're at so ladies if you don't know where your men are and i just left it like that and it was weird because there was a spot where you're supposed to chuckle yeah and they didn't mm -hmm. kind of like you and and I nobody just, did nobody did and i went oh, okay. i go you'll 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 figure that out later <laughs> and just moved on uh and yeah. so and i thought about it later i was like wait a minute guys can't laugh because that's admission of guilt and ladies aren't gonna laugh because they don't think that's funny and i was yeah. like yeah it's like all right well that's what you get for being edgy but uh all in all it was great and, and jokes don't always make it sometimes no. too right yeah. and then the same the same thing can work you know as you talk about doing live like maybe a live podcast the same thing that you do for one audience you can do it exactly the same for another and it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't go. You have to, I think the key on this is you have to just keep going. Like in your case, if you, you'd say you did that joke and nobody laughed and then you began to crumble. Yeah. Well, okay. You know what? You, you gave it a shot. You, you tried. That was it. And I had in my notes, if this is going well, 
you know, but um, I was waiting for a punchline. So no, that well, see, that when, set up when didn't... Dennis, yeah, when yeah. Dennis Miller did it, he goes, "Ladies, if you don't know where your man is right yeah. now, yeah. he's masturbating." Yeah, right. and I was like, right, you know right. what? Maybe, and I the the whole thing was I should have listened to myself because my voice is like that may not work. Yeah, and I was like, I should have just listened to my head and said, let's just do stuff that you know is because I like when I said Lawson's chip dip, because this is like you know stuff you put on your chip. Literally, I said the phrase Lawson's chip dip, and the whole audience went. Oh, <laughs> like you can hear them. Yeah, you had so, him at that point. You had yeah, him. But, you had him with food. Maybe you should have left the yeah. other. Why? Well, no, I start, it, it was worth a try. Well, and then it was the whole point of I go on after they read the names of people that are dead, and I was like, okay, I need to make this warm and fuzzy and get us off the the dead train. And I started off. I said, you know, well, first of all, I and this was improv. I just walked up and I said, I was kind of hoping you guys would be more drunk before I did this, and that got a chuckle. And I said, you know, it's kind of weird because we're here. And I said, our whole life, we, when we're young, we want to be at least this big to ride the Big Dipper at Geauga Lake. Again, inside joke that got everybody like, oh, I remember Geauga Lake because now it's a defunct um, amusement park ride. And said, and now that we're old, der, now that we're older, we're all trying to, to be young. And so that was, I just kept trying to position myself away from the list of dead people we just heard. So uh, but all in all, it went went good. I have a recording of it. I used a, a wireless mic go, but the room was so like we're talking thirty foot ceilings. It was very very, and it's just this giant echo chamber. So I think what I'll do is re-record it, and because uh, that's what I did for the thirtieth anniversary. So, but um, it was fun. It was one of those things. I was really glad I did it because I was so nervous. I was like, yeah. this is just going to be an exercise of pushing myself out of uh, your comfort zone. But uh, I did want to get to a question that came up. There's no real right or wrong answer. Um, but somebody asked this, and I went, I, I don't know. So here's here's your option. We all know that if you can get your show in front of other listeners, that's a, a good strategy, especially if their show is similar to yours. And somebody asked me this question, and I was like, huh. So there's this thing called a feed drop where, let's say Jim and I do a feed drop. I might go, hey, this is Dave. I wanted to share an episode with you guys. I know it's not Monday. It's not the typical release day. And this is because I got something special for you. Jim does a show called Home Gadget Geeks. And if you like this show, you'll probably like that show. Here's an episode of Home Gadget Geeks. And then at the end, I come back on. Hey, that was Home Gadget Geeks again. Check out Jim. I'll see you Monday with another episode of the blah, blah, blah. So that's a feed drop. Uh, or, so that's option one. Would you like your whole episode played in somebody else's show? Or B, would you rather just have them go, hey, uh, you know, today I wanted, before we get to the show, if you like this show, I have a show for you. You you might want to check out. It's great. I listen to it. It's Home Gadget Geeks, homegadgetgeeks.com. Uh, check it out. I'll have a link in the description. And even if you, in you know, in embellish, if you do more of that, like, hey, like his last episode, he was talking about robot lawnmowers and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So which one would you rather have, a, a host read endorsement or playing the whole episode? I think it kind of depends on <laughs> like, like how, and I don't know if there's a right answer on this. Like how close are they? How much does one audience know the other person? Are you willing to potentially lose some subscribers because they're like, Oh, you tricked me or whatever. Right. Um, I, I don't think there's a wrong answer to it. I'm not sure there's necessarily a right one either. And I know that's, I know that's cheating, but right. it, it, it is, I, I think, Gosh, I don't know, Dave. I mean, what you tell me your thoughts because I, I, I really with, depends. What are your I, thoughts? I'm with DR. Um, oops, wrong one. She moved. I always love that when you go to click on something. She said endorsement, and I'm thinking, yeah, because yeah. if if you have an engaged audience, when the host says jump, the audience says how high. Yeah. And yeah, so if they if yeah. that person says hey, you know that, and then D, I'm hearing a lot of people say this when I tune into a show. And I hear somebody yeah. else's show. Yeah. They're kind of like, that's not what I tuned in for. Right. Um, and then Bandrew. Bandrew. You got to love Bandrew. Neither of these seem too effective. Why not take a few clips from the show where you as a host discuss them and offer value to your audience? There we go. See, that's, to me, a great idea is not usually the first, like, out of the box thing. Like, I heard one, and I was like, that's an, here's an interesting idea. Let's say it's me and Jim and, and Daniel J. Lewis. And we decide to do a show called 
podcasting home podcast yeah, uh, home podcast network geeks yes or yeah, something yeah. Yeah. but the show doesn't actually have it might have its own website but it, i forget somebody's talking about this where it was like mac geeks weekly or something and it was three guys that we get together and the show like this week it's going to be in daniel's feed and jim and i would say oh there's a new episode of the the three amigos if you want to hear it go over to Daniel's website and you can hear it. And then we do another episode and it'd go down my feed. And then Jim and Daniel would go, Oh, go listen to it on Dave's site. And I was like, it's an interesting idea. I just, I was like, well, that's thinking outside the box. I don't know how well it works. Yeah. Cause I'd kind of like, well, if you like it, how come you're making it so hard for me to consume the content? I got to run all over the place to, to get the episodes. But I was like, I just liked the fact that I was like, Hey, that's, that's thinking outside the box. Yeah. I've never, you know, so well, um, I've, I've had you on Home Gadget Geeks rather yeah. than trying to play these episodes in Home Gadget Geeks. It wouldn't make sense. Different ideas, different concepts, different, you know, different materials. I would not want to push necessarily Ask the Podcast Coach down the Home Gadget Geeks right. uh, uh, no. feed. Yeah. But I've had you on and we talked about Ask the Podcast Coach and yeah. I, I mention it. I try to mention it at least once a month in Home Gadget Geek. Said, "Hey, we're doing this on Ask yeah. the Podcast Coach, just to give it some promotion love that way." Cool. So for that, you know that 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 kind of listen. There's a lot of right now on YouTube. There's a lot of YouTube communities around topics that are getting together, and they're doing live shows together. So they have separate podcast channels, uh, and then. Friday night they do this big, you know, uh, what was the what was the WWE when they would on the weekend Smackdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they do these big, yeah, big. I like Smackdown. They like these big fill in the blank Smackdowns. And they all get together and like they're all friends and they all talk to each other. And that's not a bad way to they I, I don't know if they rotate through the channels uh, on going live on YouTube or whatever, but that's not a bad way to do, you know, get everybody that that may be in that genre with you together. I, Ray kind of did this right with yeah. podcasters round table. That may be a, a, a way to do it as well. Which is coming back. Um, Ray. Oh, don't tease me. Don't that's, tease me. That's, uh, we're not sure how regular don't it's going to be, but I, I told Ray, I'm like, I'm ready for a round table anytime you are. Um, and he was like, Oh yeah. He goes, I, I, you know, he had his father pass away. He's like, I wasn't quitting. He goes, I just was taking a, some time off and we're like, yeah, we're just, we're just letting you take whenever you're ready. We're here, you know. So uh, Glenn makes a great point, of course. Come for the content and they stay for the host. And Bandrew, um, you know, back to his point, none of those are too effective. Why not take a few clips from the show where you as the host discuss them, um, you know, and offer value to your audience? I did that with Bandrew, uh, now that I think about it, because he, did an, he had an episode where he's talking about back during COVID, like a, a person commented, they said, this is so cool. When I listen to Bandrew's back catalog, there's no dark period where he's talking about, oh, well, welcome to the show. I was going to talk about microphones today, but instead 5,000 people are dead because of this, you know, like there was none of that. He never talked about the pandemic and people, he explained how people are like, no, man, this is serious. You need to talk about this. And he's like, no, I don't. My show. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. And consequently, now you don't have that dark period in, in his back catalog of like, well, you know, and his, his microphone's all muffled because he had to wear a mask while he was recording and then all. <laughs> so, yeah, that's always I do that on occasion. I will borrow somebody. And sometimes I don't. Well, in fact, in Bandra's case, I didn't I didn't ask, hey, can I play? Can I promote your show on my show? Because most people don't get mad if you go, wait, you're going to talk about my show. I, you can't do that. Um, so uh, it would be a different thing if I was playing the whole episode, but I was just, I thought that was a cool clip and I just love the fact you're like, no, I don't. It's my show. Nope. Sorry. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. DR says on the round table, I like getting several viewpoints of views. Yes. That was a fun dialogue, you know, again, where, where people didn't always agree or just the fact that Daniel's so Daniel and detour and, and I'm, I'm the whole Mr. Analogy guy, and then Ray was just great at making sure everybody got a a chance to uh, to chime in, well, and, and that was the key. Like I love you and Daniel, but Ray is the magic of Podcasters Roundtable. Like, oh yeah, he he is a really good moderator, yeah, and he's really good at making sure it gets moved around, yeah, and he's real I mean, he's really good at that, and that's I think that's what I appreciated the most about it is I knew he was going to keep it moving, yeah, 
in in some way and keep it honest like ray's not afraid to be like well is it really he won't yeah. call he won't call you out like straight out but he will if you say something or embellish something he'll be like i don't know is it really that way i can't talk like ray but <laughs> you know is it really that way and then yeah you know and, that was it he was good yeah. at it it yeah. stirring the pot without being you know crazy about it so yeah. Yeah, so if I it's it was funny because he just discovered that Daniel and I started another show called The Future of Podcasting. And he's like, hey, like, yeah. you guys started another show without me? We're like, well, you know, come on in if you want. Um, so uh, here's a, a, a point from Craig uh, about podcast movement. Were there enough sessions and tracks for newbie podcasters? There actually were. Um, now, there was a fair amount on, you know, monetization and ads. And I know Elsie did one about how to get a job in podcasting. Um, but I saw a fair amount. I mean, I was on the, the beginner track. They had a beginner track. They had like a technology track. They had a monetization track. They had a bunch of uh, different tracks. And the only, oh, here's the, the only thing that they kind of, if there was something I would say to Dan is cause I'm in this giant room with five stages and it's just murmur central. The last day they had them in the hallway. I didn't even know these existed. These headphones. And you could basically go to a stage. So you've got all this just, you know, background noise overpowering you. And, and for the record, if you didn't have these on, you still had no problem hearing because the speakers were pointed right at you. But if you had a problem, you could put on these headphones and tune to the stage you were in front of. And you'd had a direct connect mm -hmm. to. And I, everybody's like, w were these here all week? And apparently they were, but they put them in a different spot. So you had to walk past them to get to the presentation room so i don't think everybody knew those were there but that was a, a cool piece of technology and they've had those before i just didn't uh i didn't see them so that was a, a cool little technology hack in terms of making it easier to uh yeah. to do that and they kind of from what i understand kind of uh um a little bit of um what's the word noise canceling so which headphones are in general you know some well, they, more than others they used to do that you could go to some clubs and you would put that you could put the mm -hmm. headphones on and then they'd have different feeds and you could kind of just listen to the feed that you wanted to the music that you wanted to at the club dance to your own drummer and uh, like something along those lines i wonder if that looked weird because you'd have some people like and then somebody else yeah, is listening to something yeah, and you know yeah i think the idea was the same as that you would have like stations that was you'd have a dj at yeah. the stations and then they would be so you would gather to the station and then but but yeah this would that'd be a great this is a great implementation of that kind of uh that kind of uh, tech where yeah we're in a big open area it may be hard to hear everybody sit down like how many people do you think were at your session it was pretty what was kind of cool and this is a total ego boost and I know it, but it, it, I had people that stopped by and said, man, you really packed them in. Cause I had standing room in the back nice. where people were standing yeah. up. So that was kind of cool. I'm going to say it was 70 people. Good. Uh, yeah. Maybe more than that. I don't know. I, I need to go yeah. back. Cause, uh, and here's something that was really cool. Lou Mangello, WDW radio, super nice guy. I've known, you know, Lou for 18 years now. And without asking, he just came over and took a bunch of pictures, took a bunch of video. He's like, Hey, I, I took some pictures. How, how, and, you know, he airdropped it in that whole nine yards. So that was cool. I need to start doing that now. If I, I was like, that was really cool. Cause everybody wants, you know, for their portfolio or whatever. And, uh, but yeah, it was, it was cool. Cause it was like, it looked like I was really popular. I'm like, yeah, I was also on one of the smaller stages, but I'll be happy to be a big fish in a small pond. Cause it looked really cool. So and it went really, the other thing that was kind of nice about that is uh, Paul Culligan was there hmm. and I got done and Paul is a guy that will let you know, Hey, that didn't work. Or, you know, that, what, what do you mean by that? He got done. He's like, I haven't seen you talking a while. And I go, yeah, he goes, you've upped your game. And I'm like, well, oh, nice. I've, I've been doing it more free. So it's nice yeah. when you get uh, some feedback that, from people that would easily tell you if that didn't work or whatever. And they're like, no, that was good. So it was uh, cool. Yeah. DR has a point and I'm with her on this. I'd love to get back to smaller more intimate and I will add more affordable venues. It was such a great feel getting to really know and talk to speakers. It felt like there was more time to dive deeper into talks. Yeah. I, I will say this till the day I die. I think it's always a crime when we do a single track, small event at a Ramada Inn, And the first thing people say is we got to do this bigger. And my answer is we need to do this more often, like raise your price a little bit, 
uh, because I, you know, I didn't even look because, you know, Libsyn's picking up the tab for me, but I know there's a resort fee on there and I never used the resort. I didn't go any, you know, I, I used the back patio one evening, but, uh, you know, and also Colorado, you forget about it. Uh, you know, weed is legal there. And I walked outside twice and was like, I'm looking around the ground. I'm like, oh my God, there's a skunk out here somewhere. <laughs> and then it was like, because it did, I, I've been to concerts. I know what weed smells like. And I was like, but this smelled like there must be a brand of weed called skunk because it was Rocky it was, Mountain High, baby. That was Rocky it. Rocky Mountain High. Yeah. So in Denver knew what he was talking about. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, Jeff says, uh, I love smaller conferences. I enjoy Podfest as well. Lou Mangello's event capped at 50 people, which is that's huh. see to me. Yep. I might raise the price, let your super fans come in. Now, don't make it insane, you know, but just do it more often and raise the price instead of trying to do this one thing. And then, I mean, it's great because everybody was there. But on the other hand, I bumped into Joe Salsi High from Stacking Benjamins Mm -hmm. five times. And we'd finally go, oh, dude, so great to see you. I've been trying to talk to you all the time. And then literally it'd be like, Dave, we need you over here. Or uh, Dave, you need to go play guitar. It was funny because I'm like, honest, we'll we'll hang in a second. And we just so there was him. There were a bunch of people that were like uh, uh, Kevin Schmidlin from Grow the Show, Grow Your Show, Grow Something. Um, bumped his fist like three times. So when it's so big, it's hard to. It's almost like multiple little baby conferences, and everybody's in their own little bubble. Where I love it when I can walk out going, I met everybody there. Like I'm going to uh, Indie PodCon in New Jersey. Uh, September 9th and that's going to be fun. I love that event because it's literally like 125 people max. It's, it used to be in a holiday Inn. I know he moved it to a different hotel this time, but it's one of my favorites because there's nothing to do. There was like a holiday. You're in a holiday Inn. There was a Wawa and a Wendy's across the street. That was it. And so everything was super affordable. And I had some of the best conversations in the you know lobby of a holiday Inn. So that's my my uh my preference i i mean the big ones are fun and here's the fun thing the big ones bring in the wonderies and the spotify here's the fun thing about spotify that i was just kind of like because spotify keeps saying we're just like you guys we want open podcast and blah 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 and so there's this giant you know airport hanger of a of a vendor floor and where is spotify oh way down the hall go down there keep going a little more a little okay now turn right go a little more a little more and there they are on the right so it, it's a good three minute walk and you had to have an invite to go talk to spotify and i was like yeah that sounds like someone making fun of spotify the fact that they are the walled garden they don't really play well with others you know and they came out somebody said they they're coming out with transcripts for spotify and yet they're not using the spec that already exists. They're going to write their own. I'm like, and again, it sounds like you're, you're making fun of Spotify when you do that. So yes. Uh, Tim says, um, indie PodCon is at the best Western this year. And he got the presidential suite and it's probably like 90 bucks at the best. Western. Well, I, would, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that low. It, <laughs> it travel is out of hand. Yeah. It's out of control. Um, yeah. And then Craig says, yeah. Uh, Spotify in London had a, a booth, but it had a door on it. Like you, <laughs> it was so weird. So uh, I don't know, but um, here's a, uh, I do have, let me share my screen. We have a, a really long question. And to be honest, I read the first half of this and I was like, yeah, that's enough. Uh, we can, we can uh, talk about this. But the question is, have I stalled my podcast? Um, have I stalled my podcasting career? I appreciate any, anyone taking the time to read this and any advice you can offer. I know this is a longer post, but I'm trying to give as much context. So he's going to give us a lot of backstory. I'm a, I'm a headed toward possibly not read on semi-professional podcast producer. And I need some advice. I've been producing for going on four years. I've worked on three shows, a psychology podcast, a true crime miniseries, and currently running three season, uh, running three season podcast with content centered around the theater crowd, uh, play readings, audio books, poetry, and jazz music. That's an interesting mix. It sounds incongruous. Is that how you say that? Incongruous? Sure. It's uh, like they don't equal. Right? Yeah, uh, but it all thematically ties together. I promise. Okay. Uh, I also, can we, can we, uh, five second tangent. 
when you say it's not the content, it's almost always the content. <laughs> almost um, always, yeah, yeah. I also have more than a decade of audio engineering experience outside of this in independent film and music. So this is just a newish avenue for me. All three have gained some traction. The theater podcast, mostly we're going on 40 episodes, releasing once a month. That's about as low as I would go for that from 2020. Many of them being large productions with layers of folly. Folly, there's a word I haven't used in a while. Multiple voice actors, etc. A full British broadcast company production. And unfortunately, I'm running into a frankly stupid problem. So here's the question. Whenever, over the last couple of years, I've applied for a podcast production job, audio engineer, etc., and I managed to get an interview, the feedback I get from rejections is almost always this main podcast is engineered beautifully, but the main content you have isn't really great for our content or something to that extent. Granted, it's the sort of content Fraser Crane might listen to, Agatha Christie readings, Russian folk tales, deep cuts from the American literature canon, really PBS-oriented content. I'd worked with some decent to high-profile voice actors, many awkward May awkward, many award. Oh, award winning, and they were awkward. No, but many yeah. award winning. Uh, I don't like to toot my own horn, but you know, I'm looking for longer term work in this field, and I have to sell myself where I can when I have to resume to uh, when I have the resume. Yeah, resume it does say resume, but it's resume. I can when I have it's 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 reading with Dave, uh, where I can when I have the resume to sell. Have I shot myself in the foot by sticking with this show? I wanted to have a body of work before I started looking for other work but I feel like I'm getting nowhere now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm currently doing this with a full-time job and the podcast pays decently enough for me not to quit, but I don't have time to do a true crime show or talk show or something more mainstream. Should I take the pay cut and quit hmm, and work on something else? Is it uh, just the job market right now is doing a show like this really bad. So that was a long, uh, yeah, that was a long thing. A lot of background information there. There's a lot in there. Yeah. It, it, and unfortunately, I think a lot we get stuck. A lot of folks get stuck in this area when, when we, career, like I'm doing this thing. Is that stopping me from doing other things? Should I be doing stuff different? One, I'm not sure two guys who don't know the situation and are right. from a different country are even, I don't even know if we have the, the right stuff to answer this question. But from from a concept perspective, you just you have to kind of think along the lines of e e even you may not even know the right thing to do. And there's no guarantees on that. Right. Right. I think a half the people are going to say quit it. The other half are going to say stick with it. I think you got to try some things, you, maybe even try a third thing to see if that's going to work in the new realm. Right. It's, it's just a hard question. I, uh, people, I get asked this all the time and I work with a lot of college students, you know, kind of coming out and they got so much pressure on themselves for that first job. And you're like, yeah. guys, your career is a long time. Like <laughs> you have 45 or 50 years ahead of you in a career. Don't put so much pressure on the first job. I don't know. In a situation like this, you know, if you're getting that, listen, if you're going to interviews and you're getting feedback that the I'm the podcast right. you're currently doing are holding you back. That's yeah. kind of a it's kind of a sign, right? You kind of go, well, okay, maybe I, I should ditch those for now. If I'm an audio engineer, I'm being hired because somebody wants to sound good, and yeah. so I'm always amazed, and I get that you can't take your client's crappy audio and use them in a commercial because. Hey, Mr. Customer, can I make you look bad and show you how good and like they're not going to. So make make your own bad audio and then clean it up and do a little before and after. I'm like, this is what I'm here's me with a bad microphone in a boomy room, blah, blah, blah. And then here's this and that. And then take some of the stuff he has and go. And I've produced everything from full fledged yada, yada. So now here comes some rich music with something you do. like make yourself a. Uh, some sort of sales video to show people what you can do because that way they're not just, I, I think you would have less chance of getting stuck in a pigeonhole. Like, Oh, this guy works on this kind of show. And you're like, no, these are my, this is my skill set. I've used it here and I've used it here, but I can do all this stuff. So make something to show people what you can do. Even if it's a, a fake podcast, just, you know, it's, if I'm an actor, there's an actor's reel and, you know, um, if I'm a model, I probably have. There's a fun phrase. If Dave was a model, um, I would have maybe headshot. Maybe a hand. Maybe a hand model. A hand model. That's it. Look at me. Go back to the previous. Comment. You're my hand twin. <laughs> Dumbest friends episode ever. 
Um, so I think that would be something I would do in that case, but it's, yeah. there are jobs in podcasting. I know there's podcastingjobs.com. Um, there are a bunch. Pod news has a bunch of listings. If you read his, he has uh listings in there, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how much money, like, I don't know how lucrative it is. Uh, but uh, you know, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, you may be applying for things that it's it's the wrong fit right you know i i went to college for one career and took one i I attempted to get one job out of it and failed Mm. and in you know if i would have taken that one and i kind of did to be honest but that one experience and said well i'm not qualified for this ever why did i ever go into college for this kind of thing well no actually it takes a bunch of tries and, and, and if you realize, I think sometimes those no's are actually helping you out because they're probably places you don't want to be anyway. Yeah. And so taking, we just, it's hard to take that rejection. You know, you apply for these things and they're like, no, you're not really what we're looking for. And that's really hard. But if you turn that no into, well, that may be not what I was looking for anyways. Yeah. Right? And, and look at it from that way when it, When the situation's right, it'll present itself. And then even then, it's not always the right fit, right? You get into it, you kind of figure out, oh, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. Boy, this isn't as fun or, you know, whatever. This is more work than I was hoping for or or, or whatever. You you just, I think at some point, you got to make some decisions, like, and and follow some of the feedback you're getting. Listen, it's hard to take that feedback. It is really hard to take. It's tough. You got to, you know, if, if they're saying, yeah, your style isn't really what we're looking for. Well, okay, you got to find some places where your style is what they're looking for. Yeah, Chris over at castahead.net says, I did three different before and after video audio demos, and he's gotten work from it. He says, most people don't understand how the yeah. sausage yeah, yeah. is made, yeah. and in part two, nor do they care how the sausage is made. So yep. that's one of those where the, um, oh, I did it again. I unstart it well, before mm-hmm. removing it. There oh, sorry there we go but um, dave in that in that case sometimes the best like this is the referral network is so much stronger than mm-hmm. the, this is the proof of my work network you know and so following those referrals i think is is a way stronger you know get get somebody that you know to get a referral in there because yeah. people trust other people they did they don't like this to this comment they don't they don't want to know how the sausage is made so, but they're going to trust you off that, that demo. Right. But if they're, if somebody they know says, oh yeah, I know that guy, you should totally hire him. Yeah. Boom. Like it's that, it, yeah, it's a totally different. Yeah. So I think the referral network is, is way, a way better way to go. Yeah. The, um, I suspect this person is, this is from coach Dave. This person is suffering the effects from other issues. He or she is deep, but not connecting. I would advise practicing brevity stories and summaries. Yeah. Again, anything to, you know, I mean, the, uh, what is it? TLDR, right? Too long, didn't read. That's that's a thing. And yeah. there, are, you know, I well, I just that this whole thing, I read halfway down, and I was like, okay, I think we can use this. On. I didn't read the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I saw the question. I'm like, okay, you know, we'll we'll do the back. And I thought, if I'm reading it, it looks very long, but I'm like reading it. I'm like, it's probably ten seconds. The long. nice thing about that, though. It is, you know, oftentimes we, you know, in a podcast, you think, oh, I got to be short. I got to be short. I got to be brief. Mm-hmm. Listen, this was a person who's really struggling and you, I could kind of sense there was some pain in behind this yeah. of like, look, I really like doing this and I've submitted this work and I've been rejected. Listen, first of all, if you didn't feel that pain, you know, m- maybe, maybe check your soul. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't feel that pain in that. And then, you know, it takes a little bit of context to, to go through and say, okay, w- w- what kind of things have you done? I think sometimes in this TikTok world that we live in now, people say two things, we give them one answer and we think it's done. Yeah. And, and I think we can spend some time if you want to forge relationships with people, if you really want to grow your audience, when you get those questions from your audience, spend some time with them. My, my Gallup audience is always surprised when they ping me and I say, this is too much for this too much for email. Can I just can I just call you? Yeah. Like, can Wait, we just what? do a Zoom call? <laughs> and they're like, really? And then I get on, you know, we get on the yeah. Zoom call, and I'll say, hey, you know, hey, Steve, Steve uh, 
yeah how's it going he's like i can't believe i'm talking to you that's like yeah like i I, i've heard this voice on the podcast but now you're talking to me kind of thing um that can be super powerful and i think if we miss that opportunity sometimes as podcasters we don't connect with our audience because we want to talk to them but we want very little back we don't want to we we'd say we do but we really don't sometimes that's the, maybe I'm just talking about myself. I'm going to say, I don't know about that. I love feedback. Um, it is weird yeah, though. Cause okay. it, I mean, we've had feedback that was like, I want you to go in a completely different direction. So if it was all that, that would be different, but uh, well, we all like good feedback. We love reading that good <laughs> feedback, but when it's not good feedback or yeah. when we're, when somebody's, when somebody's being critical of us or somebody needs something from us, Right. Sometimes we short hop those with our audience. And I think those are, listen, oftentimes when you start a podcast, the very first people that you get are good that you start getting, you know, you start hearing from are the most needy. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm already busy doing this podcast. I said it in the podcast like 8,000 times. Yeah. Why can't you just listen to my, you know, uh, sometimes we short hop those relationships. I have done that. I've had people like, can I get on? a zoom call and pick your brain yeah and i've done that i think three times and the last time i was like never again yeah. i just tell people like look i got over a thousand episodes you know i i would be i would love to work with you but if you can't tell from those you know uh I, if you're still not sure if i'm a good fit then i'm probably yeah. not a good fit yeah. I'm like, right. so um it's yeah, kind of tricky it's, it's hard stuff that's the hardest stuff of podcasting that's not the easy stuff and there's not great advice for it you yeah. just got to do it yeah, yeah. Uh, Jordan Harbinger said this too. People ask for feedback or advice, but really what they're looking for is, can you please just agree with everything I've done so far? <laughs> exactly. So, can you just talk more about how great I am? <laughs> Would you do that for me? You know? Yeah. 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 So we had um, Chef Robert, the happy diabetic chef, uh, says, I might, I know it might depend. What would you recommend an ideal interview time? I often have experts in the diabetic space. Yeah, it is one of those. It depends. For me, I when I edited an interview, and I, I did one, I, I did an interview that I don't know what to do with now because it, it, it did not, even in the middle, I'm like, come on, Jackson, ask a good question because I'm bored. I'm in the middle of this interview, and I, I didn't do enough research on my guests, and I was like, eh. So now I'm going to, I can pull it out. But what I do is I listen to the question, and then I listen, okay, did they answer the actual question? Because often they will give you an answer. But I asked Jim, like, what's your favorite pizza topping? And he says, purple. I'm like, okay, he gave me an answer, but he didn't answer my question. Mm -hmm. Because especially with people that get interviewed all the time, you just ask them, like, how you doing today? And it's like, well, I was born in blah, blah, blah. And like, they start going into their story. So, so if they did answer the question, does that deliver value to my audience? And if the answer is not really, that's gone. And then when I'm done, I've got, okay, here's my seven questions that I, I uh, asked and they all deliver value. If it's 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes. If it's a half hour, it's a half hour. I'm like, it, my whole thing is, does this deliver value? And I just heard somebody uh, for the podcast rodeo show. And for me, and again, it's just my opinion. I don't care about their story unless like, if it's somebody that's like, I grew up in rural Mississippi and now I'm a you know working in the big city in New York City. Okay, that would have like relevance to the story, but otherwise I don't care. And and it sounds harsh, but it's like now once you give me some value, then I want to know where you came from. But to start off with, what made you want to be a psychiatrist? I'm like that's probably you know I don't know. So what are your thoughts on it? I mean, you do interviews all the time. All the time. Sixty minutes is my favorite for me. 60 minutes. If somebody's going to say, what's the perfect one for you? What, it, what do you think? I think it's 60 minutes. The reason why is because if people want more, generally, like we, this 20 minute thing is kind of like uh, 20, 30 minutes, yeah. whatever. People don't listen beyond that. No, some do. And if they want to, they can continue to listen. If they only have 20 minutes, then they catch the first 20 minutes of the interview. Right now, uh, people would say, well, when they see that 60 on the on the time stamp they may not even start well that's that that could be true but i i really like 60 minutes for me as a way to kind of really flush out you know and we build the interviews so that we try to get to know them a little bit in the beginning we get the most important stuff up front 
and then it gets more relaxed as we as we get towards the end. And uh, and I still don't get a lot of feedback that says no, that's too long. Some sometimes, and I'm like, well, just stop listening. And they'll say, but it's good. I don't want to miss anything. And I'm like, my point exactly, <laughs> right? It's good stuff. We get a, in an hour, we get a lot of good content uh, out of out of our guests. So that's what I like. Those those are what work for me. I do sometimes I do 30 minutes, but I like 60. I really do like that number. Yeah. See, Coach Dave says uh his ideal time for a solo show is 20 to 40 minutes. When I do interviews, they land somewhere around an hour, a budget of 20 to 30 minutes per person on average. Um, subject matter can change that. Jeff was on my show, and Jeff was really cool. Jeff C. Um social, I can never remember the freaking name, social media news live. I believe I got that right. Um Great guy, super video guy. He's the king of repurposing, buddy. I had him on my show to talk about Pinterest. And I asked him, I'm like, hey, can I show this? Because what I did, I, I, I'm i into like narrative style stuff. And so Jeff and I are talking like people, you know, how people talk. And sometimes you say things before your mouth is ready or whatever. And so I would just go and I'm like, hey, here's why I asked this. And maybe Jeff give us a little background story. I'm like, okay, don't really need that to understand the question. So it's just cutting out little bits and pieces. And so I said, Jeff, I'm like, hey, can I can I publish this? This is kind of because I've had people say, how do you edit? And everybody edits differently. And, he, and so Jeff is like, he was brutal. And I was it was just. But here's the thing. It was I kept the stuff that was good. And I looked up and I was like, wow, I've got like probably 30 minutes of content. And I was like, it's getting because I usually shoot for 30 to 40 for a whole episode. And so I had other things in there. And I was like, I'm kind of up against a clock. So I'm like, because I've got the question of the month and. Where am I going to be and all that stuff? And I'm like, we're already kind of up against the clock. And so Jeff had this really cool story about how, if you see Jeff, like his, like you have your glasses as part of your brand. Mm -hmm. Jeff's brand is his beard. And he gave the story of the beard. And I was like, mm, man, now here on one hand, Dave, it's, it's a podcast. It's not like, you know, the next show was coming up at seven 30 and I got to get off the air. Um, but I was like, man, I love the story, but we're not going to, we're not going to do the beard story. So, um, no, it's yeah, too bad. that's too bad. I probably would have left it in. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, and he yeah, says, like, no, no, no. Hey, this is, this is perfect. Cause this is, that's what it's your right. podcast. Exactly. <laughs> you can do it the way that you want to do it. I would do it a little bit differently. And that, that that's it. Right. Which one is right? Well, they're neither right or wrong. This right. isn't a right or wrong. Right. Right. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's yours and it's and, your decision. It's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Jeff is saying, look, I'm kidding. It made the show much better. It was really cool to see your process. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all it's good, Jeff. All it's good. Yeah. And so that's just me. And exactly. You might, I know some people that just, they take the interview and they do no editing Yeah. and you're like, yeah. okay, that's a style. If that's what you want to do. You know? So I'm, that's just how I do it. So I don't know. Uh, so I'm Jeff, good enough. I don't need edits. That's it. That's what I say. I know there's book editors and newspaper editors and TV editors, all always editors, time. all a waste. Of but time. you know they're not working with me. Uh, <laughs> so um, at any rate, uh, you know what we should do, and this Thanks is fun because I'm I'm not Thanks. sure what what we're gonna find out who the featured uh, person is, but uh, we're gonna thank our awesome supporters because this one's already loaded, and uh, Dave was you know suffering from post podcast movement and didn't make a new slideshow today. So we're using one from like four weeks ago. Uh, and again, nobody cares about how the, the uh, sausage was made. Dave, thanks for that. Uh, ask the podcast coach.com slash awesome is where you can become an awesome supporter. And um, if you would like to start a podcast, we've got courses, we've got coaching and we've got seriously a kick butt community. In fact, next Saturday for members of the school of podcasting, the one and only Chris Stone from castahead.net is doing a demo of Descript. And this is something I just started doing, and I don't know why I didn't do it before, but I, I, when I say we have awesome podcasting, brilliant minds in my community, it's great. Yeah. And I was like, so why is all the knowledge just coming out of Dave's head? I'm like, let's tap into, like I have another guy that does uh, Live Well and Flourish, um, and he's really into chat GPT. And he's like, I'm not really like a, an expert on chat GPT. And I'm like, you know, a whole lot more than everybody else. So he might do a session on that. So check it out. School of podcasting.com. Use the coupon code coach to save on either a monthly or yearly subscription. And right now we've only got uh, four more days, right? Are there, is there 30 or 31 in August? I think 31. Yeah. So five days left. If you join for a yearly subscription, you get a free Samson Q2U. 
And it, I had somebody that, that nibbled on that and they said, Hey, I already have a microphone. Can I get the price of the Q to you taken off my bill? And I went, sure. So, cause if you sign up for a year, I've, I've got some wiggle room. Um, the backup's not a bad idea though. It's not a bad idea. Not, not a bad idea. Yeah. The spotlight supporter of the week is Shane Wheelie from East German. And it's weird because I can't read. There we go. East Germany podcast.com. The, the stream yard thing had a little thingy over it. I couldn't read it, but, uh, Thanks to uh, to Shane for being an awesome supporter. And if you remember the old uh, days of East Germany, uh, check out that show. Um, I got to go to dinner with Brendan from PodPage, and he's got some oh, fun. Nice. He's got some fun things coming down the the pike at PodPage. And if you want to try PodPage, go to trypodpage.com. That's my affiliate link, and it's a way to support the show. And if you need more Jim Collison, and who doesn't, uh, you can go to either theaverageguy.tv or homegadgetgeeks.com. Either one will get you over. And you can uh, have a good old binge in time with some uh, Jim Cullison. And uh, we are on the journey to 40. So if you'd like to be an awesome supporter and you were thinking, hey, you know what? I bet somebody else will sign up. Uh, they didn't. And so it's your turn to become an awesome supporter. And you can do that. Yes, right now. Go to uh, askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. And uh, thanks for all our awesome supporters who have been doing that. And uh, yeah, um, Brendan's a real, it was cool. It was Brendan, Jim, uh, J uh, James Cridlin and who? some, who? yeah, who, yeah. Um, and he's who, real, he's, he's real, real he's real. And like when you hear him going, you know, live from, uh, Denver, uh, today, you know, uh, like I saw him do that. He was doing it right in the lot. And it's weird because he has to find a spot to get ambiance, but not too much ambiance. Cause then you can't hear him. So, uh, but he is a hardworking man. So I got that. And then some new guy who has a show about hacks, like hacks in life, like how to get more airplane miles and things like that. So it's, uh, yes. Um, Tim has some feedback. The, I suggested the uh, low profile mic arm uh, at El Gato. So apparently Tim got it. And this is, so these are the ones instead of like this one, you pull down. And I saw one at the B&H booth at uh, podcast movement the other ones are like they ride right on your desk and then the mic points up so it's it's more coming from the bottom of the screen which is great for people that are doing video they seem to you know this always ends up taking over half your face and things yeah like it does that. it can block your face yeah so um there we go so that's uh that was fun let's see here um here is uh i have this labeled as stop doing this okay so this should be fun uh, let me share my screen, except I'm hitting the wrong button. Yes. No present Sun Suddenly I've lost all skills of doing this. I'm like, wait, what? Okay. Um, here we go. Stop doing this collaboration, uh, slash host. Hello. I'm looking for people who want to market their podcast by coming on mine for a collaborative episode. I host interesting people with interesting topics they want to share. Um, that the premise I'm reading as it's spelled here, that the premise learning cool stuff from different people. Let me know your latest obsession and let's, uh, discuss a collab. I hope you're smiling. So I, <laughs> I like that. I like that ending. I hope you're smiling. I hope you're smiling. So I, I do see originally, I thought he didn't Sorry. say anything at all about his show or her show, but I, I host interesting people with interesting topics. And so my stop doing this is you got to give, like, if you're asking people, Hey, would you like to come on my show? Nobody gets on a bus without knowing where it's going. And that's a little vague, like interesting people. Okay. With interesting stories. And so to me, I'm like, what's the, so you can like, what's the benefit of the listener? And so I, I see this all the time where I'm like, I'm looking for a co-host for my podcast okay like what's the show about like i might be a uh you know a co-host of some sort or whatever or but it's just people aren't giving enough information so when i say stop doing that give people a target to hit so they know because otherwise you're just going to waste your time if you're like hey i i do a show about football okay is nfl um stadium whatever the usfl college like Give people a target to hit so they can better answer your question because otherwise you're going to end up with screening people that aren't like either qualified or a good fit or whatever you want to call it. And uh, so I just, I see that 
unfortunately, frequently in the uh, the different groups. Um, we have another vote of confidence. Um, I love the Elgato low profile arm. I just got it a few weeks ago. I had one and sold it and um, CG from the rocketry show. I sold it to him. He's a, a local Akron podcaster. And he was like, I was like, Oh yeah, that's all I had to do because mine, when I clamp it to my desk, hello, I've got a keyboard right in front of me and it kept like bumping into the keyboard and this and that. And CG's like, Oh, I'll, if you don't want to use it, I'll buy it. So I sold it to him. And all he did was he put a block like, you know, like remember when we used to play with blocks, mm -hmm. uh, he put like a block under the clamp. So the clamp, instead of clamping on the desk here was about three inches taller. Hence it was going over the keyboard. And I was like, Oh yeah. Brilliant. I yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, so yeah. now I have to buy a new one there. And it's one of those things that's getting knocked off. Now you can buy probably a, a newer or whatever that weird company that makes cheap knockoff stuff does that. Uh, I saw some, uh, although Elgato, I, I want to say theirs is like 90 bucks. Uh, there's a little bit of that Elgato tax in there. It's every, all their stuff's just a little more expensive, but they had ones from B and H that were like, I don't know, almost like a hydraulic. It was so smooth, the arm and this and that, but it was like, you know, 600 bucks for a boom arm. And I'm like, uh, no, like I'm, I'm okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be okay with that. So, uh, but they are fun. That's, you know, and in the end, really the only thing like this, this arm is from, it's the podcast pro. I want to say it's from OC white, which is another company that makes really, really expensive boom arms. And I love this one, but I don't like it with this mic. This mic has really bad handling noise. So I need it. A, it is sensitive. Yeah. It's I need, very sensitive. I need a uh, shock mount on, on this for the, uh, the blue. That's not a yeah. shock mount. No, this That's is, this there? is just hardwired. Okay. You know, and it's just here, but there's no kind of spring or something gonna, around it. Yeah, let me see here if I. Yeah, yeah some the, kind of pad or anything. The, the, the SM7B it. also is just hardwired, but it's just yeah, it's got stuff in it so that I don't get that kind of you know handling noise when I do that. So, but here's the thing: put the mic where it needs to be, and then you know move your mouth to it if you need to move stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I talk, can I change the subject on gear oh, we though? Can do that. Yeah. Real, just real quick. One of the things uh, I've been looking at and I've done here down in the studio too, for individuals using a laptop to podcast with, and it might be on your desk. And if you want to get it off the desk, you can do this pretty simply with, with, and here's uh, what is this? $40. Yeah. $40 even. If you've got a if you've got a mic or a, if you have a, a monitor stand already on your uh, you know like a you know a pole based monitor stand where your monitors are mounted, you can just pick up one of these trays and then a single uh, monitor arm mount a mount you would use for your monitor, flip that thing up and then bolt the stand to it and then that'll come off the side of the arm and you can put your laptop on it and get it up off your desk. It's kind of a nice way of. You can also get it sometimes like we're using a laptop for podcasting uh, and we've got the second monitor, but it's not the, the laptop. There's not a good spot to get it next to the monitor. And so this is one of those kinds of setups where you can get this using the arm method to get that laptop up off the desk, out of the way, in a location, and maybe even get your camera. Like a lot of folks suffer from this downward or upward facing camera thing because you're using your laptop camera. And it's not at the, it's not at eye level. You can use this to get your laptop off your desk and eye level. It does require you already have a you know you already have a pole in the middle that you're using right. to mount your monitor to. But I, I, this is one of those solutions. We've got these at work, and when I first saw them, I was like, "Well, that's kind of interesting." A laptop tray that's attached to a monitor arm. Oh, that would work. That'd work really well. I have that here on my work setup. So it's part of the four monitor work setup that I've got, but just, just something I've been looking at. I, there's, a, I have another laptop that I thought, eh, maybe I'll bring it over to the desk and attach this to my, one of my monitor arms to make it work. What I'm surprised they don't make, and I would love to have one is, and I guess, cause you don't want to really, you know, how all these have clamps and stuff um, is a clamp that you could put on the side of your monitor for your camera. I, yeah. I've, I've yes. seen Cause yep. I have, yep. I'm with you getting things off the desk. Cause I have my, like, here's my monitor arm here. I'll bring this over here. 
So I've got this floating, you know, and I've got two. I've got one on the right side of my uh, desk and I have another one over here. And so yeah. I've, and so now my yeah. speakers are right here and, yep. and lots of junk that should be off my desk is now <laughs> on my desk where I couldn't put that before. Well, if you do I, clear your monitor, if you get your monitors off your desk, it does create more room for junk, more room more for junk. junk. Yeah, and yeah. I, so I have that arm going into the back of the monitor and I'm always like, if I could clamp something on it and go sideways, that would then like, cause I would be great if I had my camera, like, like my camera is right there. Yeah. And my monitor is way over here now and where I should probably move it. I can't move it over too far because then it's in the shot. But I'm always like, man, if I could put the camera right on the edge of the monitor, then I could go from here to here and it wouldn't be that that big of a difference. So half the time it just looks like I'm staring at you for this uh, this show. Well, you're I'm, staring away. You're staring yeah. away from it. Yeah, yeah, you could use Manfrotto makes some expensive, but Manfrotto yeah. makes some good camera mounts yeah. that if you have a camera that's got the screw on it. You can mount those down and get it in front. Sometimes what I find, this is what I've done at work, is I have it in front of a monitor. I start doing this thing to look around. To look yes. around. You start looking around it, right? So you have to be careful with that as well. Um, yeah. But uh, Cast uh, Cast Ahead also mentions PlexiCam is that, another does, one of those. That, so would that work with a Sony ZV-1? Um, like yeah, it's, maybe it, it's got maybe. some weight to it, you know. And I was yeah, like, mm. yeah, maybe, maybe I'd use I'd use a Manfrotto clamp for that, just to be honest. It, yeah, because I mean, I've got a Elgato Pro. Yes, he says. Okay, well, awful, I'll... awful big to have in front. That kind of camera. That's it. Now, now I would big. be going. Wait, I can't. Yeah, when you I'm need trying to, to read this, and yeah, but I might again. We always think about putting it in the middle. If I just wanted it on the far right hand side. You know, granted, yeah. it's, it's going to be still me kind of staring off, but yeah. or I, I could use the um, I could use the weird new thing in Descript where they put eyeballs in your eyes that I understand either works like, oh, that's pretty impressive or uh, uh, you how know. come he's not blinking. Why is that? <laughs> how is he how do you go the whole show and not blink? He's the he's the stare master. Yeah. So that's uh you know, we're always tinkering, trying to get the best shot and the yeah. best. And, and I think a lot of that just comes back to, are you comfortable, you know, as you're, you're doing this. So, um, yeah. No, have... Listen, right on. Like you've got to get your studio set up in a way that's super comfortable for you. Like you're going to be down here a lot doing some stuff, buy a little bit of extra equipment, get some extra big monitors, do, do put, put things in a place where you can reach them. Don't have your, you know, don't have your audio interface so far away. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I got to adjust this. Oh, yeah. You know, trying to get to it, right? That all needs to be fairly close, and it all needs to be within reach. But but make sure it's neat. Make sure it's comfortable. And there are all these, like, you know, what I just showed, there are some helpful tools that you can get. Not terribly expensive to get it done. And I know last week I said I was going to start using Ecamm this week. But again, I would have been running with scissors. I did not get a chance. I had, I had set up time last night to practice. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I have 8 million, uh, you know, emails to get through after being gone forever. So probably next week we'll we'll be using Ecamm, which would be fun. And I did find one thing, but it's coming, is you won't have the ability to put things on the screen. But that is on the, oh, I, I yeah. talked to uh, Doc, somebody from Ecamm, and I was like, hey, I, you're, the, you're the man from the YouTubes. Um, so that was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, the Coach Dave says, wow, I literally ripped out walls and, and a ceiling out, decoupled everything, sealed it, and essentially made my studio soundproof. Yep. Rob Walsh did that. He has a, a, he has a floating floor. And then just tons, of, he bought, I forget how much, like stuff to put on the floor and the walls. And like, he's like, you could drop a bomb outside his house and you're not going to hear it. I was like, Holy cow. That's a little, that's a little extreme, but so they, hey, if that's what you like. Well, go for I, it. I think the other thing was they kind of looked at when they moved to Nashville, it's like, this is our forever house. This is where we're at least raising our kids here. Like we're not going any place anytime soon. And, and so he went ahead and, uh, and did that. So let's do another question here. We got another 15 minutes. If you have a question, you can always go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash question and jump into the video. So this one is transcript best practices. I'm in the process of getting a podcast off the ground, and I'm looking into the best ways to include transcripts. With episodes on the order of an hour, the transcripts are going to be lengthy enough that I'd like to do the right thing from the start 
and not have to redo work. And I've not had too much luck finding best practices examples for display. Most of what they found when searching seems to be a transcript generation itself. I certainly welcome tips on that as well uh, that are low to no cost, of course, right? And don't require an Apple environment. But I'm more concerned about trying to figure out what the final format should be uh, the episodes I'm doing are involving two and sometimes three or four people talking. And so I'm curious if anyone has found something that works in terms of useful format for the transcripts when handling multiple speakers. I'm particularly curious about handling timestamps, if those are worth including and any formatting tips to do so. So, for example, uh, it's it's the I don't know if you noticed we have a theme today, Jim. It's like really long questions. Um, so, for example, uh, if it should include timestamps or if it should just keep those for my own reference, but strip them out publicly, um, publicly available transcripts that would be hosted on my website, examples, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one of those things that I am horrible at in terms of I should do these more. I usually, I go the lazy man's route. Yeah, DR has one good point. Let's not do this. Let's not make one giant block of text because nobody's going to read that. And uh, I often will take a like verbatim from cast of magic from Otter from whoever I'm using. And I will say, here's an unedited transcript for you. Cause it's my way of saying, I don't want to edit this because if it's an hour long show, there's going to be, cause we don't talk like we write. So Grammarly is just vomiting all over it and things like that. So that's uh, I know in pod page, you can place, your transcript and it'll put it at the very bottom of the episode. Uh, I know the podcasting 2.0 people, you can actually link to an SRT file. And in some players like on blueberry, it'll actually play. Um, Daniel had a Daniel had commented on this. There's some website that you somehow put in your feed and it just makes the transcript. And as you play, it shows the words on the page. So I, I don't know to me, I would say number one, if the goal of that is to get words on your page, please remember Google wants good words. And if you just put a blank transcript, I don't know that Google is going to be sending people your way. Um, Jeff has a great point. Uh, Descript is free and it does a great job of selecting speakers. Yeah, Cast Magic does that as well. So I usually show the speakers so you can kind of do that. I don't know. Do you play much with the I, – I'm assuming Gallup does because it's, you know yeah. – Gallup, yeah. We we've actually gone in the last couple of weeks, we've kind of gone on a journey to discover the easiest way to do transcripts. I use Otter. We built our I had some interns a couple of years ago build an internal tool using Amazon's translation server or transcription services to get it done. It's a little sketchy on on it working the way we want it to work. We do produce, my standard for the podcast that we do is we do produce a transcript. It looks like a, a lot like an otter transcript. So in paragraphs, we try to keep, we try to keep it in paragraph form. We do include timestamps. I think those are important uh, for home gadget geeks. I use the plugin. I use a Hanny's plugin that then yeah. if you put any form of a timestamp in there, it'll link it to the audio yeah. by time which is super cool. I think those are important. Um, and we do correct them. So even though yeah. today's transcripts are not great, they're not accurate, a hundred percent accurate. And we go in and, uh, in, and update those to make sure they are, it takes a lot of time. It's super expensive. Like, yeah. Like, from a, from a time standpoint. Speaking of expense, I was pleasantly surprised. My, um, accountant otter was charged for another year. And remember how their prices were going up? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm not going to tell them. Like, hey, aren't isn't this supposed to be like twice as much? Like, oh, they didn't change it for you. They didn't change it. I'm like, either they charge, they charge you 99 or what? Yeah, what did 99 you, yeah. bucks for the year. And I was like, yeah. oh, cool, because I was getting. Ready. That's why I've been. You playing may have got those. grandfathered in. Yeah. I actually think that change doesn't. It's accounts after a date it's in 2024. Yeah. Because yeah. I love to, I use um, Otter a lot to like, I'm trying to find something in a show that I listen to and I want to pull a clip, but I don't want to have to listen to the 45 minute audio. So I'll run it through Otter, then do a search for the word I heard. And that sounds like a soap opera or something. The word I heard. And, uh, and that saves me a ton of time. The, on that. I, yeah. I love in Otter. I love this summary yeah. uh, of, of what you talked about. 
I'm showing that on screen right now for audio yeah. friends. Um, and you can go down here. I don't use them all and they're not a hundred percent accurate, but I copy this whole list, yep. move it into my show notes. It picks up the timestamps for them. I change again. It, it tries to make a good run at what you were actually talking about. You got to edit this as well. And then you can see here in the, uh, it, this, I like this style. I'd cop, it needs to be edited, but I like this style of paragraph, um, uh, looking transcripts. I, I just copy Otter to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I remember for a while I was on Libsyn. You can upload a file that doesn't go into your feed. It's called file for download only. So I would make the, uh, transcript a PDF. And then in the, uh, episode description, but I like, click here for a full transcript. And that way I could see if anybody was downloading them. And, uh, at least this was probably a couple of years ago, at least back then, uh, the answer was no. And that's why I kind of quit making them, but that's not cool for, you know, those that have, um, you know, they're, they're, I guess in that case, it's deaf people can't get the content cause they can't hear it. So, yeah, um, well, I, and I do for home gadget geeks, I've stopped putting the full transcript in the show notes and say transcripts available upon request, request. email Jim at the average guy.tv. And I've had a couple say, Hey, can, do, can I get the transcripts for this show? And I, no questions, no questions yeah. asked. Yeah. Yes. Is the answer. And then you give it. You know, you, you go in, I'll, t I'll ask them, Hey, um, I'm going to machine edit. I'm going to machine create these. Is that okay? And if they say yes, then I, I don't do any edits on it. A lot of, a lot of folks are just looking for the, the basics of what you were saying. Right. Um, Chris, again, uh, under the category of who knew yeah, off phonic has transcriptions. They're not very good. Yeah, right. and their HTML. It's only. automatic. They're using the same. I think they're using Amazon. They're using the same service, and it just sends it over. Those guys at Alphonic are really, really good at those SaaS yeah. you know, integrations. Like with Alphonic, did you know you can load it to uh, to, to the Google to a Google Drive? For those of us who use the web based version of it, and then say you have to set this up in advance. Go to my Google Drive and grab it from there, rather than uploading it directly to them every single time. And you can have it drop to, uh, like, if you have the video file with Auphonic, they'll fix the video. Well, they'll fix the audio in the video, and then they'll t move it over to YouTube for you. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Jeff says uh, Descript has multiple ways to export a transcript, a Word doc, HTML, SRT, which I, I, I used to do that for, uh, I still do it, for the School of Podcasting Videos. Uh, so if I want closed captioning, I basically run it through, uh, in this case it was Otter, but they export as an SRT. So, yeah, I'm going to be doubling down on Descript. Uh, you know, you'll hang out with, with Jeff and Chris for a weekend. You're like, all right, enough. Descript it is, you know. So, um, but the more I get into it, they've, they've definitely improved their learning, like their, their knowledge base. Like they actually have videos now. And it's not just edit the text and look, it edits the yeah. They're like getting deep into it. Uh, people are talking about that, that clamp you have. I forgot I have this. I got this when I had the Roadcaster. And so this is something that would just like I could screw this onto this boom arm or again, if we go with one of those lower boom arms and then it's just got this plate that you can, you know, uh, out. Out. and then this is, uh, you know, you can twist it and turn yeah. it and, and yeah. you know, do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. Yep. Um, I forget what I paid for this. I got it off of uh, Amazon and then I never used it because I was like, because eh. I was like, again, I was trying to get my desk back. And I was going to have one of those low hanging arms and just swing out the roadcaster. And then when I needed it, because like literally I hit yeah. record and actually for this show, I do need it because I'm constantly hitting the add a marker. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was like, yeah, hey, let's keep it on the desk. I don't know that the duo does the duo, the duo does the duo. No, it does. No, it does have little holes on the bottom of it. So if I wanted to mount it on something, I think I could. It's got the four, the visa mount. It's it's 100 millimeter or whatever. It's not it obvious, but there are. I definitely see. I saw three screws that were in a square, and I was like, I think that's it. So I, it's, it's hard to handy. tell. And I don't want to accidentally it's unplug handy. it. <laughs> so yeah, just cable management's important. Don't don't forget if you're starting to put things on arms like that, the cable management is is important. Make sure you're strapping that cable to the arm itself, and then you're going to probably need a little bit extra length on that to get it to the device that you need, but cable management's super important uh, yeah. when doing that. Cause you don't want those getting caught up in the, in the device itself. Especially there's something you got to keep in mind, especially if you have a standing desk. 
Correct. Put that bad boy up. Correct. Do your cable management and then put it down and see where the the slack goes. Well, yeah. Vice versa, make sure it works because sometimes up yeah. is the shortest distance and you come down and then conk things start yeah, falling uh, off shelves. Well, my whole so, thing is because I've know, got whatever. I've got Elgato key lights. And so when I go up to my standing thing, like my lights are like four inches from the ceiling. And I was like, wait, is that gonna like jump into the like I'm gonna have these big dented poles and things like that? Uh, Jeff says, uh, I use transcripts to create a thousand word article from chat GPT. That's another thing. I, I learned a lot of stuff about chat GPT just from podcasts I was listening to that. Again, if you want to save some money on the cast of magics and cap shows and things like that, um, you can do some pretty cool stuff in chat GPT for free. Mm-hmm. Then you get into the paid stuff and then you get into plugins, but it was like, Hmm. And they, they just gave a new option to be able to put personal information about yourself in. So they give you 1,500 characters to put your own things in about who you are. And now it knows you. This is the always the complaint I had about chat, chat GPT. It didn't know me. Yeah. Now it can know you. So that's kind of interesting. Interesting. That's yeah, brand so, new. A couple, yeah. couple last week. Because so. I want to give the robot more information about, but I get it. It can save time. Um, For sure. Yeah, but he can. puts a thousand word article yeah. in chat BT and he put that on my website and then put the transcript at the bottom. Yeah, I'm. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and at times I'll put a transcript in and then say, write a summary of this. Uh, James Cridlin said he will take press releases and say, write a three sentence summary of what this, because he said press releases are horribly written and people don't explain what it is. Um, Gary, Gary, nice to see you, buddy. I was just in Descript myself trying to figure out how to non-destructively remove non-essential words without removing video media from the piece. Well, um, Jeff and Chris would be the guys to ask. They are, in my opinion, the the Descript masters at this point. So, and and of course, the fun part of Descript is the minute you think you got it, you know, the little message will come up. There's a new version of Descript. Please reboot. <laughs> like, oh, really? Um, and here we go. Look at that. Jeff has the answer right there. Oops, I missed it. Um, for now, uh, you can choose ignore, and it will not make cuts in the video or audio. There we go. Um, and then adding, there's a name. I, there's a person I was hoping at podcast movement. And in fact, mm-hmm. simple cast wasn't there at least that I saw again. I, I cannot explain to you just how huge the vendor section was. It was crazy. Um, uses a standing desk to improve her breath and recording technique. I use it cause I have a little treadmill thingy under it that I occasionally will roll out. And if I'm doing stuff, if I'm not typing, if I'm just doing a lot of mouse clicky stuff, uh, I can actually walk on a treadmill while I'm working. That's one of the things I had a bike for a while, a sitting bike that didn't work. And it just came to my attention that like, maybe you should just exercise when you want yeah. to exercise, you know? Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, don't walk into a podcast. Like don't stop. Just there, there's walk on your own while you're in a meeting, when you're not talking, when right. you're doing, when you're watching your TV, duh. but it, it drives me crazy to watch these podcasters that are walking and, as much as you try to keep your breath the way it is, you, you get this kind of, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Yeah. I, I have it and it's a bad idea. I use it mm, two or three times a month, you know, and, and that's the only good news is that it means I'm actually standing. Cause I've had a standing desk that there are times I've gone months without actually standing. And I used to do that religiously at three o'clock. It was like the seventh inning stretch. Um, Oh, Rich is letting is, us this know. Is a bummer. This is a yeah. Bummer. He says the Roadcaster Pro Two has some sort of weird design flaw where the Vesa screws mess with the internal electronics. That's bad. Hey, it shorts it out and blows it up. I don't know if that's the, the case. That but... those Vesa screws on the back. That's the four that they're universal. Not really universal, but it's right. a standard for monitors and these kinds of device to connect. That has so the screw holes are all in the same place for all, for all those mounts or pretty close. Your TV has them on the back. They're a little bit bigger, depending if your TV is a little bit bigger, but that would be a real bummer if that, like it's meant, those screw holes are meant to mount things too for universal purposes. Then if they're messing with the internal, uh, that's a bummer. That is bad. Yeah, it's a bummer. Wow. So I look at the clock and I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, it's 15 time, minutes went it, fast. It's time to hit the green button. And uh, on the school of podcasting, you know what? Hold on. We're not ending the show. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, then we don't uh, have to. Yeah, that's We're, it. There's no time gods on this thing, right? Well, I, I, uh, I want to get your answer. Yeah. Uh, um, on the school of podcasting, it's the question of the month time, and the question of the month. He said, making a marker so I can find this quicker next time. Um, 
do you have any time saving tips for making a podcast? Because we all know it takes more time than we thought. Yeah. Yeah. Use, use as many integrations. Like check the services that you're currently using. We just talked about this a second ago. The services that you're currently using, whether like it like Auphonic or if it's you know, if it's a cloud-based service, see if they have integrations to other services where it'll transfer those files automatically or it'll pull down information automatically. There may be more there than you think, especially in this new world of AI. There may be some AI integrations that have been added that you didn't know about. So if you're using cloud-based services, we call those SaaS in the enterprise. If you're using cloud-based services, check check them again just to make sure it may be, you know, you, you may find some new things that you didn't know exist. There you go. And if you have one, I will not be working on this that episode till about two o'clock today. So you got two hours to get your answer in. I know the deadline was yesterday, but if you have one, uh, schoolofpodcasting.com slash question. I do have some answers, but I always like more. And to me, I'm excited. I haven't listened to them yet, and I'm excited to hear what people are doing. I know Craig is saying batch your show notes. Yep. So Craig, Craig's good at uh, answering the question of the month. But if you haven't, schoolofpodcasting.com slash question. And uh, don't forget to mention your podcast and your website and that whole nine yards. So with that, that's what's coming up on the School of Podcasting. It's uh, time-saving tips. And uh, I have a bunch now I thought about it. Uh, like one is, you know, more planning equals less editing. That's just a philosophy, but it's true. So, uh, Jim, what's coming up on uh, theaverageguy.tv? So I had a buddy at work. We celebrated his 25th anniversary in the company. And wow. so I took the night off. <laughs> so we didn't do one. But uh, um, Shane Ir- uh, Shane Dyer from Era Green is still up there. If you want to know how to save water while you're uh, watering your lawn, this this head actually uses 3D printing technology to, to get it done for you. So it's kind of cool. Check it out today. Home Gadget Geek stuff. Yeah. And again, if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, we're on the road to 40. You can simply go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome, and it'll make you feel good. I'm here to tell you, you'll be like, oh, I'm actually helping keep this thing going. So askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. Plus, if you do that, you know, by next Saturday, we'll give you a big shout out at the beginning of the show and uh, give you a little boost that way. So askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. If you want to join the School of Podcasting, go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash coach. And thanks to Dan over at based on a true story podcast.com and Mark over at podcastbranding.co. And uh, next week is what's the date next week? Oh, that's a good question. Is next week the eighth? It is. No, it's the second. No, second is good. It's the eighth. I will be out because I'll be at IndiePod or the ninth. I'll be at IndiePodCon. I believe is how that's going to somewhere around the eighth, ninth, and tenth. That weekend. We will have no show, but uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of Ask the Podcast Coach. 